Music should bring like harmony. Music should bring people together and kind of heal each other. Me with their, I don't know, their reactions and how they receive my music and how they're changed and them with my sort of interpretations and stories. Well, it's the universal language, you know, like you can go to Novobirsk or you can go to Uzbekistan and you don't speak the language but you go to a concert and you can understand what's happening and this is the beauty of it that is it's the language that we all speak to with without having to to be afraid of not understanding Keep the tempo. One, two, three, four. For me, it's actually the first time I play with such a big ensemble of soloists. Mm. It's like a, it's a, this triple concerto is a trio and orchestra. The maximum I did was double concerto with only one soloist, which was a little bit more kind of easy to adjust. But now to incorporate myself and melt into two other soloists and kind of fuse together our ideas, our personality and um, um, music. Uh, it requires actually for me to to be like with elephant ears and really I, I'm also in the middle kind of it's the conductor with the orchestra is the piano and then the two kind of soloists so I'm kind of the center point of the balance between orchestra with harmony and with them to support and kind of amplify their ideas so I really need to be very orthodox about my approach in this music. Of course I don't enter the stage with the purpose of breaking rules and uh, but in the same time I don't enter the stage with any preconceptions about what I'm going to do to control myself to kind of behave and be be in the box that people expect a classical concert to be. So I just try to work as serious in my practice and as sort of like a I don't know, researched practice, like not only instinctive, but then on stage I just, I told you, I just unplug my consciousness. I just react to the music, to the whole, to the other musicians, if it's chamber music or orchestra. And sometimes there are miracles happening, sometimes complete apocalyptic moments. And this is the, in a way, the beauty that keeps this music alive. Probably my first complex sonata was by Beethoven because I was always fascinated with this sort of revolutionary attitude that he had towards classical music, this sort of rebellious against the boundaries of tradition. And uh, again, it was beautiful because he was not doing it on purpose to kind of show, to open up his feathers like a peacock and say, look, I can be against the tide. He did it really because he really felt the urge to express himself more than the cultural level was was uh, able at that time and this music he produced was so honest and so potent somehow it was so from his inner depths that it shocked the world it was like like a rock star and uh, this sort of attitudes of course you can always feel it in his music and for me it was very yummy like really delicious to listen to play and to see how he goes crazy 
well, this this sort of uh, unpredictable elements, like this very extreme sort of character, but of course sometimes in like there are some Beethoven fourth concerto, which is almost like religious music. This sort of, I think, this kaleidoscopic personality that he could, he was infinite somehow in his mind and was a bit sad that he was affected by health, but I think he could have taken, I don't know, music even probably double as much as he did if he would have lived even 10 more years. Towards the end he was doing incredible like revolutionary stuff. For example, people already did, they, they already came to a lot of concerts, they have experience of researching some program notes and uh, read about the pieces that they're going to hear. So here I felt, especially after the first time I played, I talked to some audience member and the level of detail they were, we were sharing about the pieces that I played, it was like quite incredible. And I realized that this place, there is no need for me to come and explain to send them the GPS coordinates of my performance. But uh, in places like, I don't know, in smaller scale places where people come, like tourists from London, for example, they just pop in and probably it's their first concert. I, um, I usually try to explain a little bit so they understand, they don't feel excluded from, from me being on stage and on the spotlight. And just to understand that this, this is a community thing that we're doing. Somehow music is a little bit like acting, you know, like you, when you play a piece of music from a different composer that you never met, you only have the script of what he intended for us to receive. And somehow you need to enter, just as an actor enters a role, you need to, to kind of penetrate the score to its roots and somehow imagine yourself in this scenario that the composer lived and sort of the social implication, the cultural time that he was absorbing and reflecting the music. And um, yeah, somehow, usually I get it, like I trained myself since I was very young to, to kind of dig very deeply in the score and not just become a craftsman. Like I always was excited about the artistic side, this, these uh, elements that are hidden behind notes and um, this implies a certain acting, like a certain impersonation of a different character than what I am. Like release my ego in a different box and like start with a tabula rasa, every new piece with a different uh, sort of personality. And this of course was growing and it fed from each piece to each piece. And um, now sometimes on stage where I really disconnect from my existence. I just allow the characters to take life and do whatever they want with me. Take it logically, it's it's what gives it excitement to do it. Otherwise, if I would just become a printer of just absorb some notes and then uh, <laughs> vomit them on stage for the public. I would not, it, it, I would just be like a, like a pipe, you know, like I would not be an organism, I would not, I don't know, I would not be affected by the, the, the information, the, all this sort of claustrophobia of implications for the, of the music. This is what makes it even for me excited to spend all these hours to discover and to, <coughs> to create this connection from word to music in this sort of pseudo-abstract uh, middle ground where I imagine the words and then the music uh, confirms. So this is, this is why I think everybody should do a lot of research about the music they play. Mm -hmm. 